given the hour, given the hour, um, it's the chair's intention, unless there is a burning need to carry all the morning orders over until the next legislative day. I don't hear a burning need. You want to do one? Well, good luck getting order. Chair recognizes Representative Drenner for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm not trying to hold everybody up for lunch, but today to me, in this time of COVID, is so important to recognize that my mother's 83rd birthday is today. And like many of you, I did not spend Easter, Thanksgiving, or Christmas with her. I know she has had a very hard and lonely year. I did drive back to West Virginia for a brief visit last October because her best friend, her dog buddy, died abruptly. I'm so glad that I went despite my angst associated with possibly transmitting the virus to her. To give her a hug, to tell her how much she has loved was worth it. She taught me so many things growing up to believe in God, to be truthful, and to follow the golden rule, which is so important today more than ever. Mom, whatever God's plan is for our future, let me say this to you. Thank you. There is never a day that I am not thankful for you. Happy birthday. I'm sorry the card is late. I know that it doesn't count if you don't get it today. And here's to many more. I love you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well, and thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Dickey for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'll be brief, but this really will help me when I get back home. I want to recognize a very special person today, a, uh, back in my district, a uh, very hardworking businesswoman that rarely takes a day off, a community volunteer uh, across this state, my community, a mother, a campaign volunteer, but most important, my wife. And uh, today's my anniversary, and I'm a real lucky guy to be married to her for 43 years, so thank you. Talk about kissing up right there. Chair recognizes Representative Burchette for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I come to you today with a heavy heart. Um, in my district, we lost a great man, um, the sheriff of, of Ware County, Georgia. Uh, Randy Roll passed yesterday at lunch. The sheriff epitomized what a public servant is. He spent 40 years serving the people of his district and his county. From every, from every position, from dispatcher to sheriff, he worked his way through the ranks. Sheriff Oyl was a, was a good man, and he, uh, he always did what was right, and he exemplified a person that understood that no matter, no matter what, it was never wrong to do what's right. And I appreciate everyone in here just recognizing that uh, our law enforcement are a huge, huge reason that Georgia is such a great place to live. So if you would join me in just a, a, a few moments of reflection for the life of Sheriff Randy Royal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Bennett for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Born in Oakland, California to a mother named Shamala, 
a biologist, an immigrant from India, and to a father, Donald J. Harris, a Stanford University professor, Vice President-elect Kamala D. Harris is undoubtedly one of the most famous members of my esteemed sorority. On January the 15th, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated will recognize 113 years in our illustrious Founders Day. We have many important and well-accomplished members in our sisterhood, but today I am proud to recognize one of my own who has cracked the grass glass ceiling and that is none other than our Vice President-elect, Kamala Harris. So on behalf of Representative Carolyn Hughley, on behalf of Representative Dashaun Kendrick and myself, we honor and recognize, won't you join me in recognizing tomorrow, January the 15th, as our 113th Founders Day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Anulowitz for a morning order. Thank you. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and Thursday, January 21st is Cervical Cancer Awareness Day at the Capitol. The event Thursday morning is going to be virtual, but it's a wonderful opportunity if you want to log in, and I'm sending information on how to register for the event and how to attend the event. It's going via the Capitol Post Office to each of you, uh, but it, we're going to be recognizing advocates, physicians, stakeholders who are doing what they need to do to raise awareness of cervical cancer in Georgia and then how we can fight cervical cancer in Georgia. There's a vaccine, the human papillomavirus vaccine that actually can help put, make cervical cancer a thing of the past as well as eight kinds of cancer that impact both women and men. I hope you'll be able to join us on January 21st. Look for information in your mail. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Pruitt for a morning order. We'll do all these you want to, but I would look, point out to you that 341 is completely empty, so uh, <laughs> just, just saying. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, good afternoon. While being part of you for uh, only four days now, I felt compelled uh, to uh, this morning or this afternoon to share with you in honor of the life of one of Georgia's and District's 149's finest citizens. Uh, this morning, uh, at the age of 47, Fire Chief Lee Kirkland passed uh, after a brief battle with cancer. Chief Kirkland was a member of Sand Grove Baptist Church and a devoted uh, patriot, father, husband, community leader, and a strong follower of Christ. It is great pleasure that this morning Lee heard these words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, a moment of silence, please, in, in honor of this man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative. That's all the requests that we had to go ahead and do your morning orders today. All other morning orders that had signed up will be carried forward to the next legislative day. The clerk will read the caption to a privileged resolution. Honoring the life and memory of Roger Dale Floyd of Locust Grove. That completes the reading with privilege. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolution? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. Chair recognizes the chair of the House Appropriations Committee, Chairman England, for an announcement. Good afternoon, everyone. I know all of you are looking forward to a long weekend, and we are glad to provide you with some excellent reading. Uh, during your, your stay at home, a 400, 450-page novel that uh, is available for your pickup over at the House Budget Office in the CLOB, room 410. So once you come off the front bank of elevators, take a left, continue going to the left to the end of the hall, and it's the last room on your right. Uh, our folks will be there to hand those out, and we are taking roll to make sure that everybody gets their copy and no one else's copy, and be sure to hang on to that book. Put your name on it so nobody else takes it from you. Again, Tuesday, we will kick off our joint budget hearings with our, our colleagues from the Senate at 9 o'clock. Uh, the governor will address us that morning, and we will roll forward with that. You should have already received the link for the virtual attendance and again we strongly encourage virtual attendance there will be very limited seating in 341 uh, most of our presenters this year will be virtual 
So uh, if you're on the committee, be sure to follow the Zoom link so you will be counted present and all others are more than welcome to watch via the streaming service as well. So remember, Tuesday morning, nine o'clock, running Tuesday, Wednesday, and most of, or part of Thursday, and then our, our subcommittees will begin meeting Thursday afternoon and Friday as well, and those will also be in a virtual format. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let's not go tell the governor that the chairman called his budget proposal fiction. You called it a novel. That's fiction. <laughs> All right, we're going to have some birthdays celebrated before we come back. I want you to join with me in wishing a happy birthday on Sunday, January 17, to Representative Josh McLaren, happy birthday. <laughs> On Wednesday, January 20, to Chairman Gerald Green. <laughs> On Friday, January 22, to Representative John LaHood. <laughs> and on Saturday, January 23, to the silver-haired fox from Cordell, Representative Noel Williams. <laughs> Chair recognizes the Majority Leader of the House for a motion. Mr. Speaker, this is not a fictional motion. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand adjourned until 10 a.m. Tuesday, January the 26th, 2021. The Majority Leader has moved that this House be adjourned until Tuesday, January 26, 2021 at 10 o'clock a.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes clearly have it, and this House will be adjourned until Tuesday, January the 26th at 10 o'clock a.m. <laughs>